Annette Weiss, awakens in the middle of the night to find her husband on the floor screaming and shaking uncontrollably. He has just returned from a 23-minute visit to hell. November 23rd, 1998. You went to a prayer right. meeting, obviously, right. figures. Uh, and and uh, it's, uh, what, like 3 in the morning or so? Uh, what happened? All right, we came home from the prayer meeting the tw night of the 22nd, went to bed, and at 3 o'clock in the morning, the Lord picked me up and dropped me off in a prison cell in hell. I found myself in a prison cell. Could you feel yourself dropping, just like some people feel themselves going up to heaven? You, I, I mean, we hear a lot of stories about people going to heaven, but I've read a book recently where a lot of doctors say they don't like to report about it, but when people are coming close to death, they start, they, they, they start literally seeing what appears to be hell, and they're just so fearful. So you literally drop, then what? I dropped, like you said, and found myself in a prison cell with stone walls and bars, just like you would imagine a cell. And I didn't realize where I was at at that moment, but I noticed immediately the heat was incredible heat, that I should have been incinerated uh, and died right, right away, but I was still living through this heat. I looked and I noticed there were these two creatures in the cell. They, uh, they were reptilish in appearance, huge, about 12 or 13 feet tall, large jaw, big teeth, uh, huge claws, and uh, they were pacing like a caged bull in the cell. Uh, they were talking amongst each other, blaspheming God and cursing God. And now, now you, you told me that the, uh, Jesus had uh, told you later then that he took all memory that you were a Christian. So you went to experience what it was like as a non-Christian in right. hell. He withheld it from my mind that I was a Christian and explained that on the way back. But also, so I was there as an unsaved person would be, hmm. just like someone had not accepted the Lord. So uh, when I saw these creatures, I didn't realize immediately they were demons, but that's what they were, fallen angels or demons. And they had a hatred for, man, for God and for myself. And uh, they immediately directed their hatred towards me and picked me up and threw me into the wall. I felt my bones break. <gasps> Another one, the other one picked me up and shredded my flesh with his claws, just tore up my flesh. And um, you know, my wife and I like to work out and take care of ourselves and eat right, and now none of that mattered because the body was just being destroyed. You know, what kind of pain were you feeling when this was going on? I felt pain. I felt quite a bit of the pain. But again, on the way back, the Lord explained that he withheld a lot of the pain from me uh, so that I wouldn't have to experience the full brunt of it, hmm. but enough of it to let people know there is literal pain felt in hell. You will feel pain in the heat, and the torments are tremendous. Hell. Now, could you hear anything going on? I heard screams of millions of people that were coming from outside the cell. And I knew there were people in other spots, in other prison cells, in pits of fire, in large area of the fire that I'll, I'll get to that I saw. But the screams were deafening, overwhelming screams. It was terrible to even endure that. But you couldn't escape it. It's just so loud and piercing. So I, that was one of the things. It, it, it's got to be almost like, say, a Vietnam veteran that um, uh, remembers those things. It's something that you could never forget, those right. screams. No, you'll never forget them. I, I, I know I won't. But uh, I managed to move. I noticed I had no strength in my body at all. You have no strength in hell. So I managed to somehow crawl. That's as much energy as I could get to make a move. And apparently they let me. I crawled out of the cell. And in one direction, it's completely pitch black, a darkness that was beyond any darkness that you could feel here on Earth. And uh, it was a darkness that you could feel, like, like it talks about in Exodus 10.21. But I uh, looked the other direction, and there was a leap, flames of fire leaping high into the sky. Uh, it was off in the distance. I knew it was about 10 miles away, this huge raging pit of fire. And uh, it lit up the skyline just enough to see the desolate, barren wasteland. Nothing green, no life of any kind, just all barren and desolate. So uh, at that point, I was drugged back into the cell by the demons and more torments. But after that, uh, I was picked up and taken out of that cell and placed over near the pit of fire. And it was enormous, about a mile across, raging flames. And I could see the outlines of people in this fire, screaming. They were being burned in the fire and torment. I didn't want to go in there. It was already hot enough, but I knew I just didn't want to go into the flames. That's, that's a terrible thing to have to suffer, and these people were burning. And uh, there were demons all around this cell pushing the people back in as they tried to claw their way out. 
Uh, they really couldn't get out anyway, but the demons were just there shoving them back in. I felt so awful for the people, but also for myself. And I looked around, and I could see all these demonic creatures all around me, lined around the cavern of this, these walls. Uh, they're all different sizes and shapes. There were some huge, some small. There were spiders. There were maggots and worms and uh, big snakes. Everything disgusting that you would not want to be around. And they're all there with a hatred for you. You felt this hatred emanating from them. Did you have any feeling like you could get out of that place eventually? No. Do your penance and go? No, no. You have a knowledge. You understand eternity there. I could understand that I was there. I would never, ever get out. Never. And the pains that you suffer are really awful there. But the worst thing really is the separation from God and the hopelessness that you'll never get out. And that's why the Lord wanted me to experience uh, that I didn't know him to call on him because he wanted me to experience what they feel hopelessly lost that you'll never get out and one of the most tormenting thoughts for me was I thought about my wife we're very close and um, I have told her if anything ever happens in the world earthquake sub uh, tragedy that I'd find a way to get to her and I couldn't get to her I would never get out I would never see her again Hello, I said we're off here with Bill Weiss, and I don't know about you, but I'm literally on the edge of my seat because I have heard a lot of stories of people who have had visitations to heaven, but you don't hear too many people that have had visitations to hell. My guest, Bill Weiss, was, had his memory removed that he was a Christian and was dropped, as he put it, into a prison cell in hell for the precise purpose of what he's telling us right now. What happened next, Bill? Well, I, I, was, I was thinking about my wife a lot, and then I just wanted to talk to a person, just anybody. But you deny that. You never get to be with people. You never get to talk to anyone. You're just around these demonic creatures that can torment you and torture you. So you're denied that, that access. Uh, I noticed the smells are just terrible, foul odors. So like sulfur smell? Sulfur smell, burning flesh, uh, just the most putrid, rotten smells you could imagine. But you didn't want to breathe. Uh, you couldn't really breathe anyway. There's not enough air to breathe. Every breath took such an effort. It, I, can, I just have to describe it. I breathed like this. It was like, <coughs> like every breath you could barely get. And I thought I'm going to die any second from not enough air. But you have to go on living without enough air also. Okay, it's so hot. What about thirst? Did you have that ex sensation? Were you thirsty? Terrible thirst. Absolute, so dry. My mouth was like, like I hadn't drank in weeks uh, a drop of water. And that's how it is for eternity. There's no, no water in hell, Zechariah 9-11. And um, uh, in Luke, the rich man talked about he wanted just one drop of water, how mm. precious it would have been. And that's what it was like. Just a drop was so precious. And that's how water is to now. My wife and I now, I, I love water. But um, what happened next? I, I was viewing the desolate wasteland of heaven.